All right, so it's not often you get the, get the chance to hang out with a world-renowned biomechanist. And so he was hitting some shots, and we've got a, a body track mat down, so I thought, what a chance to talk through what all these graphs mean and understand it. I think that's pretty cool. So let's, let's just dive in here uh, and see what we got. All okay. right, we got uh, Cordy uh, taking a swing with a seven iron. And what you'll notice is that he's, uh, right away if we look over here in this, this pressure trace, we can see that he's already got quite a bit of his pressure in his setup um, down towards his trail heel, okay? Um, so he's already kind of loaded into that back foot. And you can see he's kind of got a bit of a, bit of a feeling around in the ground there to kind of get set in his posture before he takes the club back. Really gonna lead uh, load, applying a lot of force into that trail heel as he moves into the top of his uh, backswing position. And this is pretty common to see as the swing starts down, before even a lot of the motion has started in the downswing, you can see that center of pressure is starting to loop up towards that, that lead toe. So he's got a pattern like, hey, you know what, if we didn't see where this other where the trace eventually goes, We'd be saying, yeah, look, this is maybe uh, a pattern that says it's going to get the club moving in to out, right? But I know you like to play a fade, and this is, uh, this is to me, the, a, a nice way to play a fade, um, is making sure then you get that pressure into the lead heel right away. So we want to be getting um, the hips clearing, and now that's going to help you by really making sure that lead heel gets down, cleared the hips, your body is now going to be moving, your center of mass is going to be moving to be supported more over that, that lead heel, and that's going to help um, have that path be slightly out to in. Right, so we can see that loading lead heel, and then we can see the kind of the center of pressure trace moving back a little bit this way. All that is is that you're also applying a lot of pressure, pressure out here on the trail toe, right? So that's why we see that little bit of, of um, movement in the center of pressure back towards that trail toe before settling in um, closer to the lead heel. Gotcha. Your follow through. Gotcha. Yeah. What does this what does this mean over here? Explain this. Sure. So this is um, your how quickly your center of pressure is moving. Uh, the the white line is laterally so that's two and away from the target. Positive means how fast that center of pressure is moving towards the target. And usually that center of pressure velocity if we go back that's telling us when this peak is right around here, that's where you're gonna see that center pressure making a big move from the trail side to the lead side. So that's that white line, that's how fast that dot's gonna be moving across the screen. And the red curve is how fast is it shifting uh, from heel to toe, and you don't have a ton of speed in that direction of the center gotcha. pressure. And that's a good thing? Um, I think it's a good thing typically for irons. Um, our, our motion of our center of pressure is indicative of how much our center of mass is moving around. Um, if you don't move your center of mass very much in the heel toe direction, then the center of pressure doesn't have to move that much in the heel toe direction to kind of uh, prevent you from falling over. Um, if we want more club head speed and we start to uh, focus maybe a little bit less, like say we're hitting a driver, we're, we're, we're more willing to kind of take risks, so to speak, um, to get more club head speed, um, then you can see that center of pressure moving more in a heel toe direction um, because our center of mass may start to move more in that heel toe direction just because we're pushing off the ground harder and maybe we push harder off the trail foot than we wanted to um, for one particular swing and that projects our center of mass forward and then our center of pressure has to move underneath our toes to then help that center of mass move back towards the middle of our base support. But with irons, it's, it's more typical to see the center of pressure stay a little bit more down the middle line of the foot. And does this, does this white line, the lateral, which is this way? Yes, correct? to yes, does that, the target line. Does yeah. that equate to speed? Um, <clears throat> there's been some studies that have looked at um, uh, center of pressure styles by um, Ball and Best, um, and they classified people, for their research, they classified them as uh, either uh, front foot or reverse style. And they did find that you would be classified as a, as a front foot style golfer, and they did find a correlation between that center peak center of pressure velocity towards the target and club head speed 
for the front foot style um, players. People who tend to have that center of pressure kind of reverse on the downswing. We, we've seen that with a lot of the, the big hitters like, say, Justin Thomas, where that lead foot might get a little bit airborne leading into impact. That's, that center of pressure shifts towards the back foot. It's not so much indicative of, of higher club head speed in those, those types of center uh, pressure trace players. Gotcha. So what do you think about this, this trace, right? Like what is, you are the interpreter of pressure traces. Yeah. What, so what does this mean to you? Is this a, a good movement for an iron? Is this a bit too busy? Would you rather it be simpler? Like what? No, I, no, not at all. I think uh, there's nothing about the trace that tells me that, um, you know, it's gonna cause any issues in your yeah. swing. Um, uh, in fact, um, I like the fact that you're trying to play a fade and that this center of pressure trace does kind of move into that, that lead heel. Um, uh, while I can't look at a trace and tell you the path of your club through impact, um, if you have someone, for example, that's swinging a little bit, if, if you're a coach, you're like, ah, you're swinging a little bit too much into out through impact, maybe you've you got a uh, plus seven or eight path, and you're like, mm, we'd like that to be a little closer to zero, mm -hmm. um, then getting them to, to think about how can they shift that center of pressure trace kind of in the direction you've already got yours, um, then that would be good. So to me, this is kind of, this pattern is kind of matching up with the ball flight you like to play, which is a bit of a cut. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and what, I mean, why do we look at this data? Or like what, so we looked at this and we've done some analysis, yep. right? And it looks, I mean, from what you said, it looks, it looks fine. Is that typically what you do? You're looking at this and seeing if something jumps out. It's like you've got a scary movement of your center pressure trace or you've got way too much heel toe velocity going on. Like what? Yeah, I, I like it as a feedback tool for uh, players um, or as a benchmarking tool. Hey, I just played the best round of golf of my life. Come on in here. Let's see what your center of pressure is doing right now. And let's hit some good balls. Is that a good ball, Cordy? Yeah, okay, let's hit some drivers, some five irons. Let's capture that. Um, because sometimes things can show up in that center of pressure trace when you're not playing well, right? And we compare the two and we're like, oh, I think we see something here might explain uh, why your swing's not, uh, not quite working so well for you right now. Um, so one question on my setup, yeah, I was in my heels a little bit more. Yeah. And in my golf swing, I get in my heels yeah. a bit more. Does, do those correlate often? Um, if you want makes sense to me if you want a simpler movement to already start there. Sure. But if you're um, someone who wants to feel a lot of flow and a lot of rhythm, and you want to, you, you like to get your center of pressure under your heel, then I would say no, you, I'd probably say, well, or to me, it's a better idea to start a little more neutral, uh, maybe even have a, a bigger push off the front foot to kind of feel like a little more rhythm in your swing. So, but the fact that starting there isn't really, really, really a big issue. Um, Per se. Where where do most people go wrong when they go and they look at their pressure trace and look at this data? Like, is it being too picky and like trying to get get yourself to fit into a certain trace? Yeah. Or like, where do people go wrong with this? Yeah. Okay. I'd say yeah. Trying to say that there's you're looking for a certain type of trace. Um, mm, I don't really like that. Um, I like to think of it more as a, a feedback tool, right? Um, if you have someone who is struggling with their balance while they're swinging. Mm -hmm. We can show them, hey, look, your center of pressure trace is getting really close to your toes. That's because you've got um, too much of your center mass movement. You're pushing really hard off your back foot and not enough of, say, pushing your front foot towards the target line to kind of balance out that aggression on the back foot. So the center mass is going forward and then your center pressure is going forward. Maybe you're hitting balls fine here in the, uh, the bay, but when that center pressure is getting way out towards the toes, maybe out in the course, it gets a little bit too far out and then that increases that kind of uh, reflex reaction where your body says, let's do something with our limbs to prevent falling over um, instead of doing something with our limbs to make a really good golf swing. Um, so that, that trying to do it, use it as an ideal trace as opposed to using it as a feedback tool would, be, uh, would probably be the most common um, misuse, yeah. So a lot of your research is around forces that were, that were generated, yes. right? Not so yeah. much pressure. I would say. Yeah. Not so just, yeah, yeah. Are, are you, by looking at this, are you able to interpret some of what's going on with the forces of, of how the ground is being used in this, in this swing and kind of make some guesses on that and hmm. see, see if you think that's good or not? Or is that just kind of like, is that a whole different ball game? 
Uh, no, they're definitely related. Um, so I, maybe I'll go back to answer this question with the referring back to the question you asked last time is that uh, some common issues is that people might see a big movement of the center of pressure and think that that's the weight. Um, but this is how hard you're pushing into the ground with one foot or one part of the foot relative to the other part or the other part of the other foot. So give me an example. Yeah, what's the so example? So when when you uh, if we were to drag this and go um, right here, where you're at about shaft vertical downswing somewhere, if we're to look face on, maybe you're a tad past. Um, but someone might say, "Oh, look, Cordy's got all of his weight into his." Uh, lead heel, or not all of it, but a lot of it's into his lead heel right now. That's where the center of pressure is. No, your center of mass, which is representative of where your weight is, could still be on your trail side. You're just pushing harder into the ground vertically with that lead foot. It doesn't necessarily tell us where your center of mass is. A real simple example of that is my center of mass isn't going to move, um, but if we were to say, okay, um, I want my center of pressure to shift all the way to my lead heel like yours did. That's no problem. I can just pick up my trail foot. Actually, my center of mass moves in the opposite direction, right? So my center of pressure now goes under my lead heel. Center of pressure is going to go under the lead heel. And my center of mass moves the opposite direction. So this doesn't really, especially when movements are fast and dynamic, give us an indication of, of hey, where's the weight?